Well, the clock is ticking just hours to go now before SpaceX and NASA will attempt to make history launching astronauts from U.S. soil for the first time in nine years. You are looking live at Launch Pad 39A, the historic Launch Pad 39A, where the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon capsule sit ready for the 4.33 p.m. liftoff. Of course, the big question this morning, will the weather hold up? Right now it is raining in Cocoa Beach. This afternoon, launch managers predicting a 60% chance of favorable weather for liftoff. Of course, it's not just the weather here on the Cape, it's weather all up and down the East Coast. And uh, we do have the threat for more rain later today, as meteorologist Troy Bridges has been pointing out. Now, let's give you a rundown of uh, how things will shape up today. No matter when this liftoff does happen, it will be one for the history books. Not only is this the first crude launch from American soil since the shuttle program, but it's the first time a private company will launch astronauts. If all goes according to plan, the Crew Dragon will dock with the International Space Station tomorrow. They'll then become part of the ISS crew, and at this point, there's not, not even a timetable yet for when they will come home. There's a lot of different uh, elements that come into play as to when they come home. Uh, remember, this is a test flight. The highest priority is to test the vehicle. Um, and, and get it home safely, and then be prepared to launch Crew-1. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine calling the two astronauts that will fly on this mission, Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley, American heroes for being part of this test flight. And both men are no strangers to being in space. They are seasoned, and they have been preparing for this critical mission for years. Let's get over to News 6's James Barvero, live at the Kennedy Space Center for more on how they've been preparing. James. Good morning, Justin. Maybe two and a half, three, three and a half hours until Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley wake up in their crew quarters here at Kennedy Space Center. The countdown clock now under T minus 10 hours. You just heard the NASA administrator. He's here right now at Kennedy Space Center press site working with NASA TV. A lot of excitement. Take you back to Saturday. We had beautiful weather in that moment for the dry dress run, the rehearsal of launch day for Bob and Doug getting out in their new SpaceX spacesuits. They're going to put those spacesuits on today about 12 1230. They're going to leave the operations and checkout building just like they did Saturday around 1 o'clock. A new image in today, SpaceX took a photo of Hurley and his wife Karen Nyberg and their son Jack. Nyberg happens to be an astronaut too. Bankin himself married an astronaut. Karen Nyberg says one of the silver linings of this pandemic is all the time the family has been able to spend together. They had their final moments yesterday. Another astronaut who has been to space with Bankin and Karen Nyberg, Hurley's wife, he understands what makes Bob and Doug a great team. Listen. Why do you think Bob and Doug make a great team? They're both very experienced. They've both got two shuttle flights under their, their belt, and they know each other very well, and they, they anticipate each other's moves. I think they make a very good crew. And Garrett Reisman, he knows them very well. He's worked with them on the commercial crew program for all these years. Bob and Doug selected back in 2018 to fly on this mission right now with the SpaceX Crew Dragon and the Falcon 9 rocket. Vertical as sun rises at Kennedy Space Center. We will continue to watch this countdown clock, weather permitting, of course. But the countdown, as you can see, it is on. Live at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, I'm James Sparvero, getting results news 6. James, thank you. And with just hours to go until liftoff, excitement is building here on the Space Coast. More and more people flocking here to the Cocoa Beach Pier to get their spot to watch this moment in history. The rain is falling. That's not stopping them from showing up, though. And that's the case all up and down the coast. For more on our team coverage, let's get over to Mark Lehman. He's live at Space View Park. And Mark, I know that that is a very popular place to watch a launch. This year, they're could be some changes though with social distancing. Well, and that's what officials are hoping for, that there won't be those large crowds that gather here in Space View Park. But as we're uh, getting closer to sunrise here, as the sun is peeking up just over the horizon behind me, you can see more and more people are showing up out here, giving us a glimpse of what we might expect later today. Now, typically, uh, we'd be expecting to see people crowded into this park this afternoon, but with coronavirus concerns, that's what officials are hoping to avoid when this rocket is set to lift off this afternoon. And... Uh really excited about it. The excitement of a historic launch was enough for Gretchen and Hank Manley to make the drive from Palm Beach for a prime viewing spot. Anxiously wait around in the morning, maybe go for a walk. 
uh, try to kill some time. But the couple admits they're also mindful about social distancing and the difficulties that could come with watching today's liftoff. Six or seven feet away from you. Yeah. And we just had dinner at a restaurant down here, yeah. uh, the Pier 220, yeah. and everyone in there was uh, distant. On Tuesday, workers cleared away brush along US-1 in Titusville to give an unobstructed view across the Indian River. For the launch today, most of the popular viewing areas will be open, but there could be limited parking. Jetty Park, for example, will only be open to annual pass holders and will close once it reaches 50% vehicle capacity, something designed to limit crowds. And earlier this month, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine urged everyone to stay at home and either watch from their backyard or on an electronic device. But with few viewing restrictions in place, local authorities are planning for a lot of people to be showing up out here this afternoon. Of course, we will keep you updated with what we are seeing here throughout the day. For now, reporting live in Titusville, Mark Lehman getting results. News 6. Mark, thank you. And those anticipated crowds will mean extra traffic. News 6 traffic safety expert Trooper Steve has details on closures and where you can and cannot stop to watch the launch. Local authorities have issued a no left turn from northbound A1A to westbound 520. This will be during the course of all day during the Space Coast launch out there in Brevard County. So as you're traveling in this area, make sure you're paying attention. Some things that I talk about all the time is no stopping on limited access highway. State Road 528, both east and westbound, you've got to keep on moving. Whether it's launch time or not, do not stop on the shoulders. There'll be a lot of extra troopers, not really out there to give you a hard time, but to make sure that you're doing things safely. Same thing applies along I-95. You must keep moving. Titusville all the way down to Rockledge or pretty much anywhere along I-95. No stopping. Even if you do see that rocket go up, it's going to be a beautiful sight. However, no stopping on the shoulders again, unless something's wrong with your car. And then to kind of assist with some traffic, we know A1A is going to see a lot of dense traffic out there. They are saying use US-1 as your north and southbound alternate if you do not want to sit in any of that localized slowdowns. Now, we all want to enjoy a safe launch, so and that's starts with you. So drive safely, take it easy and follow the rules. Guys, back to you. As the countdown clock ticks down to liftoff, News 6 will be putting you in the director's chair. Join us for our virtual launch experience. That's where you will have access to 20 different live cameras, including our 360 degree camera on the Cocoa Beach Pier. It all kicks off at noon at clickorlando.com space.